Let your yes mean yes and your no mean no. Integrity. What is it? How is the integrity defined? Adherence to moral principle. Honesty. The quality of being unimpaired. Soundness. Unity. Wholeness. The teaching of our church says that integrity ensures the unity of the person. It is opposed to any behavior that would impair it. It tolerates neither a double life nor duplicity in speech. In our gospel today, Jesus raises the bar by saying, You heard it said, but I say to you. He's calling us to a higher standard. He asks more from us. He's calling us towards something greater. Jesus and his life, death, and resurrection has certainly raised the bar for us. No longer is it sufficient for us to just carry around a label or a list of rules as our identity preceding us. We have to have a way of life written on our hearts, and we have to live that out in a real way. In a word, we must be the body of Christ, both inside these church walls and outside them. We have to be the body of Christ in the exterior of our person, by what we wear and say, but also in the deep, dark depths of our hearts. We have to be the body of Christ. When we read the newspaper, when we watch the news on television, we go to a movie or, com- or attend a community event, what do we see? Well, we see a, la- a lack of real integrity in our world today. From the highest, most public positions in our country to the least seen corners, there is a real lack of integrity. This lack doesn't limit itself to the secular, meaning non-religious, part of our culture either. In our church, we suffer from a lack of real integrity as well. Not one of us is innocent from this. Integrity is uh, is honesty, soundness, and unity of a person, a wholeness of being. And Jesus showed us what that is. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Jesus was completely and perfectly honest, both inside in his heart when talking to the Father, and outside when talking to anybody else that encountered him. He was authentic. He showed us that we need to be someone who, being sinners, we make faults. So we need to admit those faults. We need to own up to them. We need to step up and correct our own behavior that we may live the commandments of God fully and be perfectly obedient to the Father as Jesus was. Where is the integrity in our world? Well, brothers and sisters, quite simply, it needs to start with us. We're baptized and God has called us to live our baptismal promises fully in this world. The church teaches us ways that we can do that, the ways that we can begin to live integrity, to be people of integrity, through self-knowledge, by knowing ourselves well, by practice of self-discipline, by telling ourselves no when we need to tell ourselves no, by obedience to God's commandments, exercising the moral virtues, and most importantly, Fidelity to prayer. Friends, Jesus has called us to something greater today. We are called to be men and women of integrity. We need to learn self-mastery. Let your yes mean yes and your no mean no. And it all begins with honesty. Being honest with self. Am I following God's commandments to the best of my ability? Am I following God's commandments as Jesus did in this life or not? Examine your heart each night before you go to bed. Begin to practice that self-mastery every day. We pray today. May the Holy Spirit enlighten our hearts and show each of us what God wants us to see. And may we all grow in integrity this week, month, and year. Every year at this time, our bishop asks every member of
the Diocese of Grand Island to join his ministry in serving all of the people of our diocese. He does this by inviting all of us to participate in his annual financial appeal. We are Catholic by being connected to our bishop, who connects us to Peter in Rome, to the Holy Father. So we're only Catholic insofar as we're connected to the bishop. This coming week, you'll receive a packet of information and a letter from Bishop Deniger explaining how your financial support will be used to support various ministries in our diocese. We encourage each of you and myself to open the packet and pray with the material. Each Catholic family will be invited to consider making a financial gift, gift to the best of your ability to our diocese. And please know one area that's supported by this appeal is the money necessary to process and bring priests from India to help serve our diocese. And without these priests, there would be a lot of parishes throughout our diocese that wouldn't be able to gather for Sunday Mass. It also helps pay for seminarians, raising young men uh, from our diocese to train them to be priests. So that money is well used. At this time, we'd like to provide you with a witness someone in our parish, from our parish, who works closely with the diocese, who is a man of integrity, to step forward and give you his witness of what this financial support means to the Diocese of Grand Island. So I invite uh, Mr. John Burks forward. Thank you, Father. My name is John Burks. I started becoming involved in St. Patrick's Parish a little over a year ago. I am involved in the Knights of Columbus, attend monthly brunches, the annual barbecue, daily masses, and various other events sponsored by the parish. I also have the special privilege of being involved with RCIA as a sponsor of one of the catechumens. I'm very blessed to be part of such a great parish. It has allowed me to grow spiritually and connect with great people. Today I would like to focus more on the big picture. As Father mentioned, it would be pretty easy to take all of these opportunities for granted. We are blessed to have great priests serving our parish and resources available to enrich our relationship with Jesus and other parishioners. I work for the Diocese of Grand Island as the Associate Director of Youth and Young Adult Ministry. I have the opportunity to serve the diocese by organizing programs to benefit the youth and young adults. These programs not only benefit St. Patrick's, but all parishes. Our focus is to make available conversion experiences, leadership development, and new evangelization. We provide a variety of opportunities for youth and young adults to be engaged in the transformative experiences that will allow them to commit their lives to being a disciple of Jesus Christ. We equip youth and young adults with the tools necessary to lead others in becoming disciples of Jesus. And we call forth Catholics to be evangelized and go forth to evangelize with a renewed relationship with Jesus and his church. One of these opportunities is higher ground. I'm sure many of you have heard of this program. It used to be called Outward Bound. It's in its 49th year. We are coordinating this program. When coordinating this program, I get to witness firsthand living our faith, sharing our gifts together. I get the special privileges of seeing the generosity of staff and the transformation of participants. One particular story stands out to me this year. I had one of my first staff members sign up to work a week of higher ground, share with me that this will be one of her two weeks of vacation from her full-time job. What an example of sharing her time and gifts with a program committed to the youth in our diocese. It also excites me when I hear stories from parents of how they almost had to force their child on the bus to go to a higher ground, but only after five days they have to convince them to come home. Without the generosity of the people of the Diocese of Grand Island, living their faith, sharing their gifts of time, talent, and treasure, higher ground would not be what we have grown to expect and value as an opportunity for growth in our diocese. Other programs that are supported by the diocese include Tech, Teens Encounter Christ, which is a three-day retreat focusing on the Paschal Mystery, Going Bananas for Jesus, 
which is hosted in various locations across the diocese. Most recently, we've been traveling to Kearney to help form the team that will be organizing the youth rally in 2015. NCYC, the National Catholic Youth Conference, was hosted in Indianapolis where we had our biggest delegation yet to experience the church on a national level with 23,000 other Catholics. Totus Tuus is in its third year and is similar to Vacation Bible School, but unique in the fact that we train and empower college students to share their faith around the diocese during these week-long events. We have the privilege of offering a certificate in youth ministry, which is a series of courses that promote leadership development for ministry with adolescents. Presenters are coming from across the nation to educate and train adults right here in our diocese. We are also available to visit parishes throughout the diocese to support youth ministry in their parish. For example, on Tuesday, we travel to Scotts Bluff Gearing area to facilitate discussions and help lead youth ministry efforts. Thank you for your support of living our faith, sharing our gifts together. May we not take for granted the things that we have grown to appreciate and value in our diocese.